Today I'm excited to show you a intersection observers. If you're a web developer, you probably implemented something similar to an infinite scroll or something that interacts with the user as it comes to the screen of the user's viewport. Now, as a developer, you've probably done this the hard way using either a library that attached to a window scroll event and continuously watch over an element. And then you do all the calculation to make sure the element is in the user's viewport before you do something. Now, I'm happy to say that with intersection observers, you don't have to do any of that. All of this comes natively with the browser. And as of today, well, as a while ago, all major modern browsers support this new API. So today I want to show you how this can be done. To start, we're going to have a very simple website. Here I have a simple HTML page with a container that contains all of our contents. And then there's a subcontainer where we put all the text in there. Let's say this is the content area. And then at the very end, we're going to have a infinite scroll trigger. What this does is this, whenever this div is scroll in view of the user, I want to append more content into this div. So this is a very simple infinite scroll example using the intersection observer. And I'm going to take uh, jQuery in here. I'm probably not going to use it, but I'll put it in there if you want to select uh, your DOM elements a lot easier. But um, I'm going to show you a way where you don't have to really use jQuery. Um, so, and then this includes a script.js. So let's go to script.js and see how this works. So when the document's ready, I'm going to make a new observer doing const observer equals new intersection observer. Now this accepts a function as the parameter. So this function here accepts a value called entries. Now for each entry, you want to check if the entry's intersection ratio is greater than zero. If it is, this means this object is in view. So don't worry if you don't understand what this does right now, but uh, I'm going to show you how this, uh, how you can set it up. Now once you have the observer variable sets, you can use it to observe a specific element on the page. Remember, in this case, we want the you to observe this element here at the bottom of the content. This means when this element is in view, which the obser it's observed by the observer, when it's in view, I want to execute the following. So I'm going to imitate this Ajax effect where when it's in view, I want to wait for a couple of seconds to fetch the data from the server and then replace the content of this div with the stuff that's coming back on the server. Since I don't have any Ajax ready, I'm just going to fake it by doing a set timeout of one second. When the, con when the one second is up, I want to change the HTML inside the more contents class, which is here. I want to replace the content here, a loading with this stuff down here. So it's very simple. Let's see an example how this works, okay? Let me go to the web page right now. So as I scroll down, you notice that as I go to the end of here, you see it just loaded in more content at the bottom. I'm going to pause it. Let me change this set timeout to a much longer period so you know you can see what exactly is happening. So let's say this Ajax takes five seconds to fetch the data from the server. And I'm going to resize this a little bit. So let me refresh this. Now, if I scroll down to the bottom, as it reaches the observer div, remember, as it reaches the trigger right here, it's going to fetch the more posts from the more data from the server. So if you do this, so here it's in view, it's observing, and then it's loading the content in five seconds. And there the, there's the content. So it's very simple. Using this, you can very easily check if something is in view and then you can you choose what to do when it's in view the key here is the if check if you check the entry the intersection ratio is greater than zero this means this object is in view so you can do whatever you want here 
Amazing. I can let me comment this out and I'll show you an easier way. So if I comment this out and then I'll just do an alert. I'm just gonna say in view. So maybe this will make it easier for you uh, to see. So here I already. So if I refresh this, and then if I scroll down, there you see the pop up box says in view. So this API is a lot more powerful than the example here, but I just want to show you the basics. The key here is the, there's an option that it takes a an option for this. Um, you can also pass that into the intersection observer as a second parameter. So here, what I'm saying is I want the root con root container root element to be the container element. So which is this one here. So you can basically say whatever is inside this observer will only happen inside of this container. And then the threshold, the 1.0 here means 100%. So when the object is 100% in view, then trigger it. Here you can, or you can say, I, I want to trigger this uh, when the object is, let's say, 20% in view. So you just do 0.2. And this will trigger when the object is over 20% in view. So this is very useful if you want to fine tune your your code to make it um, work the way you want it. So, and here's the CSS for this, very simple. And I hope you find this one, uh, this API useful. If you want more information, you can go to the link in the description I posted in from the Mozilla org. And it gives you a lot more info about this API. It's a lot more powerful than it seems. And with this, you don't really have to use any infinite scroll libraries or anything that checks if the elements in view. So you can say bye bye to the old way of implementing that. A few caveats is that this thing is not compatible with all browsers. At the moment, all the latest Edge, Firefox, and Chrome supports it, but IE 11 doesn't, and Safari doesn't support it at all. So if you really want to use this, you will need to use a polyfill, which I will link it in the description below as well. This polyfill will allow you to use this API by simply including the polyfill URL into your code. So most likely this one here, just include that to the bottom of your page and you will have this API available. So this way, any browser should be able to use this API. So I hope you find this tutorial useful and I hope this makes your life easier. I'll see you next time.